if a person is sincere but he's not in tariqah, is he in trouble or not? Yes. <laughs> There's, sincerity is an ocean. You understand? Some people, they're very sincere when it comes to business. They're very honest, but they don't know Allah and they don't care. Yes? Some people, they know Allah and they care about Allah, but they're not sincere in business. So many like that, especially Pakistanis in this country. <laughs> Indians also. Who else? You're not saying anything. Okay, never mind. Everything, everyone will have a little piece of the cake also. So, it's a big ocean, you understand? Those ones, are they going to be in trouble? Look, tariqat means having a guide. Tariqat means having a share. Our Shah is saying that great saint, one of our grand sheikhs and the great friend of Allah, Abu Yazir of Islam, is saying the one who does not have a shaykh, his shaykh is shaitan. His words are true. Now, in the old days, everyone had a shaykh. Everyone. Even if they don't formally like, say, oh, I belong to this tariqat, which it is kind of impossible. Because in the old days, to even belong to a, the industry, yeah? to belong to an industry, let's say you are a tailor, tailor, there is an organization and it is mixed also with tariqat and tariqat trainings. That is why, how deep tasawuf is in the empire of the Ottomans. So maybe they don't formally say, I want to be a murid, I want to train, but they're inside there and they recognize that it's a saint, that it's a peer, they want to be, their heart is there. Because, especially in the old days, not everyone is qualified to take the training. You can be a muhib. And from far away, the shaykh says, you are from us also, but what is your job? Planting potatoes. You plant potatoes. You don't come here to live at the dergah. Okay? These days, top to bottom, they don't believe in shaykhs. They don't believe in saints. This is the majority. Minority, they do. And majority saying, not only they don't believe, and they say, why we have to anyway? We have Allah. Why you have to take? Oh, my shaykh, my shaykh is prophet. They're saying. So they may, they are maybe good people. They are good people. They are good people everywhere. But there is something there that is missing. There is something there that is missing. Will they be in trouble? I'll say this much. Huh? Shaykh Effendi says, the one who is praying, fasting, going, doing, giving zakat, going to the hajj, doing everything correctly as a Muslim, as a believer, as a Muslim, but he doesn't have a shaykh. His first punishment is coming out from his grave to stand alone in all that confusion and darkness for 1,000 years. I'm not saying this. Sheriff Handy is saying this. And 40 grand sheikhs are saying this. What does that mean? Understand, open it up a little bit also. That means that you don't have a guide. To not have a guide is punishment enough. You understand? It's not about a person and this is not having a guide. In that field, in that mahshar, in that judgment day, there's going to be complete chaos and there's going to be complete fear. It's going to be complete darkness and complete heat because the sun is going to be right above your head. The sun is going to be judged. Everything is going to be judged. And if you don't know where you're going, where you belong, if you don't have a guide to show you where to stand, isn't that punishment enough already? It's a punishment. So, those ones who are really sincere, Allah will send a guide to them, yes. Those ones who are really sincere, before they pass from this world too, there will be a friend of Allah who is going to be able to formally take care of them. We're not going to enter into that other ocean where uh, the friends of Allah, they are not in charge. They are always in charge of everything. 
So, will they be in trouble? Yes, they'll be in trouble. Especially in these days where they are telling people, and it's all broken, no? they're telling people, okay, even those who are believing in tariqat, believing in sheikhs, believing in saints, they say, oh, Shaykh Maulana, he's out of Islam. Yes? We heard, we've been hearing it for as long as we can remember. He's out of Ahl Sunnat. Countries and muftis, they are slamming him. Huh? You think that time, if they are hurting, trying to hurt the friends of Allah, Allah is not going to declare war on them? This is Ayatul Karima. So even if you are belonging to other tariqats, but you don't have that wisdom, that understanding to know that this is Sultan al awliya and those criticism that you have against him, it doesn't have any bearing at all. You don't have that. You are still stubborn and arrogant and you want to continue to curse at him. You will be in trouble. How are you not going to be in trouble? If he says, it's okay. It's okay, Ya Rabbi. He intercedes for them, they're not going to be in trouble. Otherwise, Allah on that day, He's going to be filled with not only justice, the prophets are saying, our Lord is very angry at us today. You understand? So as believers, as people in tariqat, what is it that we are doing now? Are we going to be arrogant? Are we going to push people away? Are we going to be elitist? No. More people, we are going to try to make them to love directly or indirectly the ways of our sheikhs, the ways of the awliya, the ways of the prophet, so that at least... We can say on the Day of Judgment, this one is not in tariqat, but he likes our way. He likes this aspect. He likes this practice. He is supporting in this way, that way, because the mercy of Allah is very wide. So that is our job now, not to push people away, especially those who are trying to do something. Those, those ones who are standing in the way, those ones who are trying to actively destroy, those ones who have ill will towards us, always trying to make fitna. We live Him and Allah. You understand? Those ones, you're trying to reach out to them, why? Are they reaching out to you? They're reaching out to you, reach out to them. They're not reaching out to you. Every time you're coming to them, they know that you are part of Sahib al and they start cursing at you and they start cursing at our Shah. It's better that you don't even be close to them because that time they're going to curse less. If they can stop, you say, okay, you're my family. You don't like. Then draw a line. Don't cross that line. We talk about something else. Don't talk about that. That is enough for us. We are not like people who just come into Islam or come, become a Wahhabi to say, now we have to make everyone to become like us. It's not like that too. First, we have to work on ourselves. And then to those who want it, we share. Those who don't want it, why are you going to share? Tama? Yes. <laughs>